Hello everyone. In a previous video, I showed you how to convert the data from column A and column B by using a pivot table as a helper step to give the final outcome like this. As I mentioned in my blog, this is a very good approach, but that is a quick and dirty one, good for one-off transformation only. Because if you change your data, you have to repeat all the intermediate steps again to get the final result. But if we are doing it with Power Query, when we change our data, for example, change Robert from Team B to Team A, Michael also, what we need to do is just a simple refresh like this. See, all the data is updated automatically. And what's more, even when we have new teams added to the data, for example, now I have a new team called Team V, with Peter and Anne as the team member. What I need to do is just a simple refresh. Isn't it cool? Before we dive in, let me show you the logic behind so that we can have a better understanding of the step we are going to perform. First, load it into Power Query first. Select the table, go to Data tab, click on From Table or Range. Now we have the Power Query editor with the data loaded into it. What we try to do is to pivot the column name. We want to put all the names into corresponding columns instead of a single column. So before we can do it, we need to tell Excel the coordinate of each name. We can do so by adding an index column. So now we can go to Add Column tab, select Index Column, and select from 1. And the result will be a sequential number from 1 to 18. We can use this column to do the pivot. We can go to Transform tab, Pivot Column. The value we want is actually the name. So select the name. And because we just want the original value, we do not want any calculation. So I'm going to select don't aggregate. Don't aggregate. Then OK and look at the result. The result is an additional 18 column. Why is it? Let's look at the data. For James, he has an index of 1. For Peter, Robert and Michael, they have an index of 2, 3, and 4. For William, he has an index of 5, so that's why he is being put on column 5 instead of column 1. Same case for David, Richard, and Joseph. The columns they are assigned is actually depends on the index assigned to it. We do not want that. What we want is William should be put on column 1, David to be put on column 2, Richard on column 3, Joseph on column 4, etc, etc. So we cannot simply use a column index for sequential number 1 to 18. What we need is the sequential number should change for each team. For team 8, we want 1, 2, 3, 4. But starting from team B, we want 1, 2, 3, 4. For team C, we want to start over 1, 2, 3. Same for team D. In other words, we cannot simply to have an index column like that. We need to do something else, and it requires the extra step. This is the challenge of today. I'm going to show you in a second. When we have the data loaded into Power Query, the first transformation we want is goodbye. So go to transform, goodbye. 
I want to go by team. So select team here, which means for all the team A, group them together. Same for B, C, D, and E. I don't need any calculation when we group the data. I simply want all the records. So I select all rows, OK. Now I have a unique list of team A to E. Next to it is the original table. Let's click on it to preview it. Here we see the original data for team A. This is the table for team B, team C, team D, and team E. The next step we want to do is to add the index column to each table. For example, here I want index 1 to 3. For this table, I want the index 1 to 5. For this one, it's 1 to 2. In order to do that, we need some M code. Yes, M code. Be frank, I do not know how to write the M code. So I'm not going to write it, I'm going to copy it. How we can copy some M code? The first step is we need to create the step of adding an index column. So let's do it from the user interface. I have just added the index column and this is the formula for adding the index column. I'm going to copy this formula. After I copy it, I can delete the steps. I do not actually need this step, so delete it. What I really want is to add a custom column. In this custom column formula, I'm going to paste the formula. Here, I need to do some modification to tell Power Query what table I want to add the index column to. Actually, this is the table under the column called count here. I want to add the index column to each table there. OK. A result of a new custom column with different tables, we can see that the index column is added. This is the original table without the index column. This is the new table with the index column. Look at one more example. This is original table for team B. This is the new table for team D. We have done what we want. This is the column we need. Right click on it. Remove other columns. Look at them again. Each table is team name and index. So the next step is to expand this column by clicking on this icon. Uncheck the box. Select the column that we want. I want all of them. OK. There we go. We have a table with the team, the name, and the index column that is Responding to the team. So I select the index, go to transform, pivot. The value column to pivot is name. I don't want any aggregation. OK. Here we go. But the headers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is not so meaningful. So I'm going back to make some changes. Let just remove this step for this moment. On this step, I want to add a prefix to all the numbers. So I select this column, go to transform, format, add prefix. The prefix I want to add is a member with a space. As a result, I will get a list of member with a number instead of just the number. And now I would suggest we will also define the data type here. So they are text. So let's make them text. Remember, in Power Query, we have to define the column 
data type correctly. That is important. So now we are ready to do the pivot again. Select index, pivot, and then repeat the steps. OK. Here we go. We can now load the result to the spreadsheet. Go to home, close and load, close and load to. I want to load it to the existing version. Let's load it there. OK. You know what? Let's make some change. Change Robert and Michael to Team B. Add the new team of Team F with the members of Mary and also Nikki. And now we just need the trick of refresh. Hey, did you see that? In the result, the names are not sorted. B should come first, and should come first. We want to sort them in ascending order. How can we do that? Let's go back to the Power Query Editor. Edit. I want you to focus on this step, group growth. This is the steps, this is the result after group side. In each table, we have the name, they are not sorted. They just follow exactly the same order from the original data set. We want to sort them, so we need to apply an additional step. Before we do that, I want to remove all the subsequent steps here. I want to focus on this single step by adding an ad additional column to sort the name column in each of the table. I need the formula, so I need to apply the steps first. Let me sort the team here in ascending order. Now I have the formula that I need. Copy it. I can remove the step. I'm going to add a custom column. Go to add column, custom column. In the formula, I'm going to paste the formula and I'm going to replace this to count that hold all the tables I want to apply the steps. No error is detected. Good. Okay. Look, look, take a look at each table. Wait. The names, they are not sorted. Let's look at the formula here. I want you to focus on this portion, each table sort, sort what? Count, the tables under count. And the sort order is ascending. Only this portion is not correct. They are sorting the team. They are not sorting the name. So I'm going to replace the team with name. Enter. Look at the result. Now, the names, they are all sorted in ascending order. I will leave the rest of the step to you to practice. Have fun.